Hi, this is Randy. So this video is just for some of you who may be in the um, discard phase right now. And the point of my video today is that a lot of us don't know we are with a malignant narcissist until they do the discard on us and it's quite shocking because from our point of view we're the ones who should have been discarded just discarding them quite a long time ago and we we know this it's like they're the ones who were hanging on who were clingy who um, had all these expectations and did a lot of future faking and uh, future faking is uh, making plans for the future and talking about what you two are going to do together a lot uh, as if they're really you know planning on being with you for a long time or forever so um, we don't start a lot a lot of times exploring narcissism until the discard because we're so stunned about how it all went down and then we see the person that we um, a person we did not know um, acting in a way that does not resemble at all how they were but they we realize that um, you know even though they you know had been quite a dick or a bitch or unreasonable at times during the relationship, um, the discard is just something that is impossible to wrap your mind around because they often, um, they may go completely no contact with you for no um, apparent reason to you. Um, or they will say things that are ten times as hurtful as they ever said throughout the course of the relationship. And um, you'll be left without the um, self-esteem or without the dignity that you would have been able to have had you go ahead and set boundaries earlier on and discarded them or you know extinguish the relationship in a mature way but you probably knew in your heart that even if you tried to do that it wouldn't work out well for you either because um, the narcissist gets you into this kind of no-win situation whereas you know that if you had tried to end the relationship sooner either be stalked, tortured, um, you'd be tortured in a different way. Uh, if you wait for them to discard you, then um, you're tortured in a, another kind of a way. So the, the best thing is, is to not continue a relationship with these people and to end it as soon as possible. To get boring on them, get gray rocked, and uh, let them on their own to move away from you um, that keeps their ego in place and when their ego is left in place uninjured they're less likely to uh, lash out and be cruel to you but uh, if you fight back or if you you know give the narcissist a piece of your mind as you're walking out or as they are walking out you will definitely but uh, in the end, you know, it's, it's tit for tat. You know, you do get the satisfaction of being able to say what you wanted to say to them and tell them how they are. But the problem is they, they don't take anything to heart and they don't, um, they don't take you seriously no matter what because their defenses and denial uh, levels are so strong that anything that probes at uh, their false self and, uh, you know, disturbs their delusional hornet's nest um, is, is something that they must defend and they must make you pay for um, to prove to themselves that they are strong and that they are not what you say they are but they're actually this 
else have them for a while, let somebody else go through that kind of stress and that kind of hamster wheel walking on eggshells all the time, insecurities, babysitting the narcissist to make sure they don't get into trouble. I mean, that's not a relationship. It's not an equal relationship, which is what I think most women, or at least that's what I am looking for, is an equal relationship, meaning equal power in the relationship, not one controlling the other, um, but both compromising to certain extents without breaking, you know, personal boundaries and um, values. So that's all for